So this is um something I've been meaning to do for a while. Um, I always make stuff, come up with stuff, change stuff, break stuff. Um, yeah, always doing little bits and always think afterwards should have videoed that. Might be quite useful. Um, if not just for me looking back on it, but for someone else who's uh, in a similar position or wants to do something similar. So this is one of them projects where I've thought that and I'm actually going to video it. So I'm going to do it now. Um, you know, I'm not going to put it off anymore. Why not? Let's get it out there and see what happens. Um, I've bought myself a little mill. or More strictly a jig borer. It's a Linley jig borer. Um, and a sort of lightweight mill. Um, I've got it for the grand sum of a uh, hundred quid. It's probably worth more than that in scrap. But yeah, it's um, a nice neat little machine. It's got um, oh, dovetail bedways, which are a little bit sticky, but um, all seem quite tight. Seem fairly useful. That's a little vice I've got on there. Something I'd laying off my drill press. Um, the headstock on it's all one piece, um, and this this sort of headstock here is um, it's counterbalanced, so you can knock that lever off there. You can actually move the whole headstock up and down, lock it back off. Um, and you can knock the front off, and then you've got a nice fine adjust on the on the quill feed there. So for drilling, it's going to be great. Um, you can probably get some accurate depths on a mill cutter as well. I have tried, messed around with a little bit of brass, just see what sort of finish I could get. Chucked around with a little end mill in there, and it's, it's fine for what it is. Little bits and pieces. Uh, it's 240 volt, single phase motor. Um, let's say it's, it's had another switch put on it at some point there. Um, so we can sort that out. It comes with some tools. There's some collets there. These collets are apparently like rock and roll shit non-standard non-available things um a few homemade things in there not really good for much at all really um a couple of little c-spanner things for yeah homemade plates so the the chuck or collet assembly um, two little C-spanners to open it and takes those little odd collets but one of the things I have thought about is potentially regrinding the um, the spindle uh, to take a a more standard collet I'm thinking maybe the ER32 if there's enough space if not the ER25 or something like that just a much cheaper standard off the shelf collet um yeah, that's uh, it's not a too bad little machine. It runs well. Little belt driven V pulleys. Belts are crispy. Let's see if we can get some uh, get some replacements of those. I imagine they're fairly standard, or we'll be able to find something of that sort of standard. Um, yeah, needs a good clean. It's absolutely filthy. Uh, nice little storage cabinet under there but it is solid pig iron you know this is when they used to make machines properly i think this is a well, so that's pre-63 it's the it's the earliest one that lindley did and uh that's a little nameplate on there so yeah i think that's where the old lamp went some kind of swing out lamp might be able to see if I can come up with something to do that uh, yeah so yeah I paid £100 for it so uh, I don't think it's too bad like I say it all spins alright uh, tell you what I'll uh, wait there. just um, uh, flick out switch on No. Uh, fire up. Good spin up. Mm, seems to run alright. Tooling runs nice and true. If you can see that with my wobbly hands. Um,
Yeah. All in all, seems alright. Say, so, doesn't need a good clean, but um, yeah. What I'm going to do is strip bits down, give them clean up, see what they like, stay in the bedways, uh, put it back together, have a look at that spindle, see what we can do with the collets, maybe clean the uh, outside down, get a bit of rub down and a coat of machine paint, and uh, yeah, see what we get. Might be a quite a useful little garage tool. Oh, the other thing I have thought about doing is um, it's quite low. It's quite quite low down. Um, when I was messing around with that bit of brass, I ended up almost sat on my knees. Um, so I may build um, just down here a little plinth, just a little brick plinth with a concrete slab on top or something like that, just to just to raise it up off the ground um, and a foot or so, give us a bit of extra height. Um, don't really plan on moving it. It's in quite a nice little place at the moment, just by the door. Um, yeah, garage needs to sort out a lot of stuff in there. I don't need. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll have a play with it and I'll uh, I'll keep you updated. And if anyone's got any suggestions on different ways I could do stuff or things I could do with it when it's done, um, yeah, it could be quite interesting. So uh, yeah, why not bring you along for it? See what happens. So I have taken out the spindle, which wasn't an arbitrary experience if I'm honest. Took a jiggling around of a few bits, undoing of a few bits. In the process, I uh, went to undo this here, which was a, like a lock nut with a grub screw in there. That came off in, you know, I had to sneeze and the thing fell off. Uh, so that's something we're going to have to look at drilling out maybe. Um, yeah, and did the the quill feed, took the main quill off, disconnected the counterbalance weight for the quill, lowered it all up, had to get the bed as far back, as far over as it would go, and then that allowed me to drop these out, had to undo that lock nut and that nut there, and then the entire thing came out. And actually, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm getting the light. It's hard to hear a bit. You can see in there. It's a very small taper. And I'm actually thinking that it is more of an ER25 collet modification by the look of it and what I might do is get uh, see if I can get someone to just stop a bit of weld on those and then re-turn them, re-drill them just to patch that up in one piece that's where the C-spanners work for tighten up the little nose um, the nose is no. Right, that's the um, that's the nose piece, which you can see is actually starting to break away. It's quite brittle on the inside. I mean, it still, it still works, but one of the things I might do is end up making a new one of these anyway to suit the new collets. I'm not quite sure I'm going to make it out of that. I'm not sure I want to make it out of that, to be honest. I'll probably leave that as it is, and then we can make a new one with the right tape on the inside of that to fit the new collets. So, whoop, amateur, absolute amateur. So, yeah, I think a little regrinder that would work well. We'll have a look. So, I am here at the lathe, luckily to have uh, access to the lathe at work, uh, I can have a little play. Um, I've actually called in a favour and I've had the end thread changed to uh, M32 by one and a half. 
which fits the standard collet nut. Uh, this one I bought off Amazon, $7.99. Actually not that bad, <laughs> runs fairly true. Um, I had to take 2mm off the face here to make the, um, the distances work between here and bottoming out on this face here to give me enough clamping to go the um, the ranges of the collets, which is 1mm each, each collet size. Um, worst case scenario is a 16 to 15mm collet, which um, needs 4.4mm of... of thread travel to go from 16 to 15 including clamping um, and I've worked out that I can do it with what I've got with this nut um, and now I'm just going to have a go at turning the uh, the taper. I've had a go at turning it and it does actually turn okay so I haven't got to grind it which is which is nice. I'm just going to set up a boring bar and uh, <coughs> have a play getting the angle nice and accurate with a clock um, and then I'm going to slowly put the taper in and I'll just gradually go deeper and deeper until I get the correct engagement. I think I can get away with about two turns on the nut um, before the, the collet engages in the taper. And then I've got 4.4 mil of travel, um, which will leave me about a millimetre off bottoming on that face um, to give me the full working range of the collet. So I think it's going to work. Um, I've just clocked it up in the lathe, so it's all spinning nice and true. Um, yeah, I'll just set up the taper and, uh, and have a go. I'll let you know how I get on. Right, there she is. Cut the tape up. So I didn't film any of it. It's quite difficult to film and do uh, the machine at the same time. I haven't got any tripods or anything at the moment. Um, yeah, you see that mark on the thread there? The, um, the guy got to do it. He did it on a CNC lathe and he, um, he accidentally lent on the emergency stop and it. Uh, it dragged across the thread. He spent two hours trying to pick it back up again so he could carry on the thread to poor bugger. So it still works lovely. He's done a, done a nice job of picking it back up. It's a nice thread. It's got that mark on it. It's not too big of a deal. Um, inside, I've polished it. I've got a nice smooth finish on there. Sorry, the light's pretty rubbish. It's, um, It turned out quite nice. Uh, pen in there, just some dry marker, and just tried to see what it was picking up on. And it's getting up on the whole length when you give it a bit of torque, and it, it fits in there absolutely lovely. And just pops in and out. I see a witness mark in there if I do that. Yeah, some witness marks right the way up. Open there, so yeah, it's got a nice bit of contact. Put it in lightly. There's there's no side to side wobble. A little bit of tension. It's solid as a rock, so that's perfect. Uh, I set it up here with the 15 to 16 in it, and if I Engage that so that's just engaged. I've got, oh, again. I've got one, two turns before the collet just engages, and that gives us our oh, the gap. That's our 16 mil start diameter, and then. This is the worst case scenario. Um, the biggest collet needs the most amount of thread travel. Let's go that band actually. And we can get all the way down. To there, which is 14.9 15mm. So we have the full amount of travel we need and enough equipment to get clamped onto what we need. So, yeah, all in all, I think a success. Let's get it back on now and get ready with the, uh, the rest of the uh, cleaning up and 
put them together but I think it's going to make it a much more useful tool having this made up and set up for you know, 25 collets. Worthwhile job. So I'm showing little plates all built back up, as you can see. Um, I've just had a go with a little fly cutter. One that I made during my apprenticeship ship actually, many moons ago. Um, left a nice little surface finish. Um, and now I've got a 10mm, end mill in there. Um, and I'm just having a play, just seeing how, how it's running. You can see it's running, obviously only by eye. It's running beautifully true. Um, I've not adjusted bedways, the bedways are still sticky, they're slopping them, I've not adjusted the speed, it's set to whatever it was, um, so it squeals a little bit, but it's just to have a, a quick go. Um, and also trying to turn this carefully, one-handed, turn a little cut on, there we go. ready for the squeal. Absolutely horrible, but yeah, I didn't expect. I just wanted to see if it cuts, see how true it holds. Um, yeah, more than happy with it. Definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the modification of the spindle assembly. And uh, yeah, lots more to do. But at least it's a usable machine now, and if there's anything left for the machine, I can uh, I can at least use this to sort of fabric cobble something together. If we need to. Um, yeah. Happy chappy. Right. I'll probably end this one here, and then I'll make another one. I'll start another video on whatever I decide to do next. Probably going to be to take apart these bedways because they are stiff sticky and there's a little bit of slop in them but they are all adjustable so uh, that'll probably be the next bit but yeah for now in terms of spindle jobs are good